Hello and welcome to another video on the S33 electrical channel. Today I'm going to share with you a wiring diagram for a meter base and a main disconnect panel. And this is going to be for a single family dwelling unit. We're also going to go over a few different configurations of uh, the service entrance to a single meter, single family home. And it's going to be different for your multi dwelling, multi meter banks, and commercial buildings. This is just primarily for a single family dwelling unit, single meter. And uh, I was gonna, just wanted to do this video. I think that some of y'all could benefit from it. It's pretty basic, um, but it could be new information to some of you, so I want to go over it. And we're going to start right here. This is your meter and this is your panel board, the main disconnect. Here I'm going to show a second, uh, a riser going up and it could go from could be coming in from the bottom too depending on what you actually have but I think the most common is a, is a riser so we'll go with that and it's going to start right here this is going to be your line and line and load is your in and out on your meter bank your line will always be on the top and load is always on the bottom so if you had your incoming feed from coming into the bottom it would go to the top and it's coming in from the top it goes to the top so line and load and there's going to be three conductors coming in. It's going to be black. In the city of Boston where I live, it's red, black. And I'm going to use a blue pin here for the neutral wire. This would be... Oh, not that one. This would be your uh, white wire. And here's red. So those are your three incoming lines going to the top of the meter, the line side. And then from here, we're going to go to our panel board. Panel board. And depending on what kind of panel you're using, you're actually installing this, um, you're going to want to check to make sure which is the, the ground and the neutral. They bond together anyhow, uh, but you're going to want to look at that make sure that you're landing the neutral to the right side. Usually it's pretty, pretty obvious when you're looking at it. So. Here's the black. I'm also going to go there, and it's basically your A and B face. Neutral. Okay, then you're going to have a ground wire. If you have a slab, it's usually going to be a U for ground where it will come into here and connect to your ground bar. So the first point of disconnect, your neutrals and your ground, it, it bonds. If, it, if you don't have a U for, then it would come in from a ground rod down below and it's going to connect to this bar right here. Some panels have lugs, some don't. Could be, could be something like that. But anyhow, your main disconnect, that's where your neutrals and your grounds are going to bond. And that's pretty much it. This would be like a PVC nipple going into the inside of the house. And your breaker wires will be going. So like you'll have your breakers and your branch circuits will be going out. Usually through like a PVC nipple, bottom of the panel. So that's, that's it, pretty simple. Um, so now we're going to go over the different service entrances that you typically see out there. This is a uh, pedestal configuration, and what you have here is this would basically be like a little slab that's poured somewhere near the easement, like near the road. And you have your meter on the, the pedestal, a disconnect, and out of this disconnect, you'll have an underground conduit that will run over to the house here and then this will actually technically be a sub panel here in Austin um, they require anytime you have a separate structure that there be a disconnect regardless that it is a sub panel so um, if I were doing this I would I would have a main breaker here just as a as a safety switch disconnect and anytime you have a separate structure 
you're required to have a ground. Say this is a slab, this would be a gufer, or it could be ground rods. I've seen a lot of these pedestals where I live in the Central Texas area, it's PEC, and I've seen a lot of them that don't have a ground rod, but you should have a uh, gufer ground here as well. And this is where your um, this is where your um, ground and neutral will actually bond. That's first disconnects. This is the main break to disconnect. And then in this conduit, you should have a ground wire, your A and B phase. which is why, again, we're using this uh, aqua pen as just kind of a, it's hard to see white on white. Okay, so you have four wires going from your pedestal to your, your panel over here. Yeah, I think we covered that pretty well. That's usually how it goes. Um, so yeah. Here we have a, we're gonna do a overhead riser. And this is a city pole, city transformer. Your incoming transmission lines they usually run about 14,000 volts, just depending on where you're at. And then from the service drop, from the service, or this transformer, you're going to have a service drop. And here would be your house. You'll have your panel, meter, and then a riser going up. Here I live in Austin, Texas, the minimum for your attachment point is 12, five, or 12 and a half foot and the maximum is 15 foot unless you are crossing a driveway or a uh, yeah if you're crossing a driveway then it would need to be a minimum of 16 foot and a max of 18 foot uh, so that's just how it is here in Austin but the the electric co-op Austin Energy would supply this uh, service drop that it connects to this point and um, it's just as simple as that so that's your typical overhead connection um, also here in Austin it has to be it has to be more than five foot away from the pole and it cannot be more than 75 foot max. So there's a, a distance requirement that you have to meet there at the pole. Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna do a secondary riser. And this is a, um, where you have a pole, a uh, conduit going up the pole to the transformer. All synergy requires us to have two conduits and it goes to a, uh, there will be a designer that works on the project with you and they'll tell you the manhole, but usually it's a 18 inch manhole. And from there, it just goes underground to uh, your electrical service. And that's that's basically it. I don't think we'll go back over the um, the color coding. It's just going to be your A B and neutral going from the from here to there. And then your ground wire will be a U for ground, usually, or uh, could be ground rods. So that's it. That's the three different um, service interests. You got a secondary riser. You got a overhead riser. You have a pedestal. And uh, here's just basic, uh, a basic wiring diagram. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Um, and we're going to be doing some more like this. If, you, if this is helping you out and you're, you're benefiting from these videos, please let me know just by a simple thumbs up or even a comment. It's even better. And that lets me know that there's, it's actually having an impact and it will motivate me to put more out more quickly. Uh, so until that next video, guys, y'all be cool. Peace.